Welcome everyone, it's Andrew from ITB and we have the two new iPad Pros and we're going to jump through 22 new features coming to these Pro tablets. The first most obvious change is going to be on the smaller 10.5 inch version. That means it's a new form factor, different size than we've ever had in the past. Here it is compared to the older 9.7 inch iPad Pro. It's a slightly bit bigger, but of course has a quite a bit bigger screen. It'll definitely be a dramatic difference when using the iPad. We also have now USB 3.0 transfer speeds coming to the 10.5 inch iPad, which is gonna make things like importing photos a whole lot faster. The smaller iPad Pro also has fast charging. So if you have a USB-C to lightning cable, you can charge using one of the USB-C power bricks and get your iPad powered up quite a bit quicker. Also on that 10.5 inch model, it has a 30.8 watt hour battery, which is up from the 27.91 watt hour battery that was in the 9.7 inch iPad Pro. The smaller iPad Pro also got a bump in RAM, going from two to four gigs of RAM, even though the 12 inch still has the same four gigs. Cameras are all around new with some huge enhancements. We're gonna go through all the new features that we have here. Noticeably, they're pretty much the same cameras on the iPhone 7. That means both the 10.5 and 12.9 have a new 12 megapixel camera here with an increased aperture to 1.8. So if you're not familiar with aperture, this is basically the opening to the camera. So the smaller the number, so 1.8, the wider the opening, which means more light can come in and the photos look a lot better, especially in low light situations. The front facing camera also got an upgrade to 7 megapixels and it can now shoot 1080p videos up from 720p in the past. iPad Pro also has enhanced ability to detect faces and bodies as well when doing autofocus. The cameras now have built in optical image stabilization so whether you're bouncing or your subject's bouncing, really easy to focus in a lot easier. HDR also now has an auto mode. It's able to automatically turn on HDR when it is needed, which is high dynamic range. It's gonna be really helpful for some outdoor scenic photos or if you have like a dark object with a lighter background. The larger 12.9 inch iPad Pro is now able to shoot 4K movies, which is going to be really, really handy. Panoramas got a new increase in resolution, obviously because of the new lenses on the iPads. Before, it was going to be a total of up to 43 megapixels, but now with that new 12 megapixel shooter, you can get up to a 63 megapixel image. The 9.7 inch model in the past always had a true tone display when it was first announced, but unfortunately the 12 inch model was left in the dust. Now the true tone display comes to both of them and it's really, really handy. One of my favorite features, just adjusting the color and warmth of the screen to the room that you're in. We also have a new pro motion display, which is the ability to refresh at 120 Hertz, which is super handy, but it doesn't just refresh that quickly all the time. It depends on what content you're working in. A movie doesn't have 120 frames a second, so it can lower it down. Especially if you're reading, it has even less than that. So it's able to slow the refresh rate when you're doing something like reading or watching a movie, but increase it when you're working on artwork or playing a game. The ability to dynamically change the refresh rate really helps in keeping battery life even better, but it also makes the iPad itself feel more reactive and more fluid when you're interacting with it. So a lot of enhancements to the screen, but they're not done yet. It also now has support for that P3 wide color gamut. You can see just how crazy good that screen looks now. It's gonna be awesome for those new HDR photos and 4K videos you're gonna be shooting. It's also 50% brighter as well, going all the way up to 600 nits. There are also many changes inside, including the A10X Fusion chip, the M10 Motion Co processor, which is used for many things like tracking a lot of health data and stuff on the phone, but also for things like mapping and location when you're on the iPad. Storage configurations have also changed. It used to be 32, 128, and 256. Those have pretty much all doubled. Now you can start off at 64 and go all the way up to 512 gigabytes of SSD storage inside of your iPad, which is absolutely ridiculous and it really is starting to become more a pro replacement for a laptop for many, many things. We also finally got that upgrade to the Touch ID second generation, which is a whole, whole lot quicker to unlock your iPad. I've absolutely loved spending time with this new iPad and all of these ridiculous new features that are making this more and more of a pro unit. The problem still is, iOS 10 isn't there yet, and that's because iOS 11 is really going to unlock the full potential of this iPad, and that'll be coming out later this fall. There's so many cool things you can do that are really gonna be making this more of a full featured device. Things like drag and drop are gonna be absolutely amazing. So if you guys like to pick up a 12.9 or 10.5 inch iPad Pro, there's links below, but you can really pick them up almost anywhere, Best Buy, Apple Store, so you probably don't need those links. If you have any questions though, let us know down in the comments. Otherwise, subscribe, and until next time, it's Andrew 
for IDB.